I have a chapter where I write about this Leonard Kyle, who was a, a Cambridge, Massachusetts engineer who um, was who was who received these experimental tr brain implants um, in the in the I think it was like the late 60s, early 70s, mm. and he started to feel that his doctors were. Is this the terminal man? He was, well, it turns out he was the sub, that Michael Crichton was his. That's insane. Was the resident. Can you explain that whole story? <laughs> yeah, so that, the whole story is that I had, um, so Leonard Kyle was uh, this really gifted self-taught engineer in who grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, but from a, like a working class family, he briefly was in the military. He had some sort of, like, it, he was also raised in an, part-time in an orphanage because his mother couldn't afford to keep him and his siblings at home. So he was possibly exposed to abuse when he was a kid at this church where you know, the orphanage was. But at any rate, he became incredibly successful, uh, especially for someone who didn't have a PhD. He was one of the <clears throat> inventors of at Polaroid of patents for their optical for optical devices that were essential for their instamatic cameras. Mm. And he also worked for many defense, uh, prominent defense industry mm. uh, companies at the time, in the, so in the 60s. So he was, his family, you know, his mother was really proud of him. He started, he got married to his childhood sweetheart and they started to have a large family. And he got, um, he was flying around the world too, sometimes overseeing, um, he was instrumental in inventing the, triggers for nuclear bombs test bombs oh wow because he you know the optical aspect of them and he he uh anyway he was troubled by that and he ended up quitting the defense work but he he ended up at polaroid at any rate he was starting to have um as his family grew and as he was experiencing men uh merit marriage difficulties there's also in a car accident anyway he had like the normal run of it seems like he had the normal run of stresses he's he also worried that his wife was having an affair with uh the boarder who had come to live with him to save some money at any rate they went to they went for therapy the, um one of his doctors was uh recommended that he check himself into uh to mass general hospital where there was a violence unit and this was actually ultimately possibly connected what well, at any rate it was possibly a violence like, unit a violence unit it was an experimental unit that was being uh set up by two doctors named uh frank frank irvin and uh vernon mark and vernon mark was a neurologist who was a psychosurgeon and frank irvin was a psychiatrist or psychologist too and they were both interested in whether violence could be controlled because so this guy leonard kyle he was he had these arguments with his wife and there were there were allegations possibly that he was he was very temperamental mm -hmm. so his therapist thought that you know maybe he'd be a candidate for brain implants that would quell his violence and they were very <sighs> so there's kind of like there was later a lawsuit which alleged that he was not these were not necessary treatments and that he was actually an experimental subject or a guinea pig but at any rate he was um he was he agreed because his wife said if if she if he didn't undergo this treatment she would divorce him uh he he accepted you know these uh temporary implants initially and the implants were put in his amygdala there were many theories at the time that the amygdala is the seat of violence so there's oh uh, an array of uh, electrodes implanted in his amygdala uh, and his head was stabilized with a stereotactic device, which looks very torturous, but it is actually sort of state of the art at the time. Steve, can you find photos? And they um, they would stimulate different parts of his brain, and when they of the amygdala, and when he responded, he would say things like, "I feel like I'm floating on a cloud," "I feel bliss," and or you know, I feel, you know, or he would seem to get really angry. So they wanted to find those spots that triggered anger. And ultimately, so I'll, I won't jump ahead, but basically mm -hmm. they found those spots and they, and they got him to agree to consent to a permanent operation of, you know, that would uh, sever or uh, surgically cauterize those parts of his brain from firing. So hopefully he would become less violent. Oh, but the wow. thing is they got him to, 
sign the consent form while he was in a state of bliss, while his brain was being stimulated mm. in the other area. So this was one thing his family br later brought up in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. At any rate, these two doctors carried out the operation and Kyle was never the same. He was never able to work again. And he began, he became paranoid. He became convinced that doctors from MIT and Harvard were pursuing him. He fled across the country to try to see his mother who lived in California and he was found wandering around in a parking lot in a dazed state and the police rounded him up and he said, no, I'm the inventor, I'm an important engineer, I invented these patents. Mm -hmm. And it was actually true, he just seemed like a madman and he never recovered, but he just continued to have these delusions that he was in a science fiction story. And it turns out that actually one of his, the assistant to doctors Mark and Irvin was Michael Crichton, who was a Harvard, medical student Jesus at the time <laughs> and Michael Crichton ended up writing the terminal man about him and you know if you read the terminal man you'll see that the doctor's initials are M and E for Mark and Irvin but oh he just changes their name oh my god so he wasn't delusional he was, he was paranoid even <laughs> yeah just because you're paranoid doesn't mean it's not happening right and he was both like in incredible pain and then his wife did end up going on and marrying the border in the so house. So she was and having an she, affair. Well, maybe not at the time, but maybe there was flirtation or something. We don't we don't know, but I've actually been in contact with a couple of his grandchildren who and they're very, you know, become have become interested in the story because they never knew about it. They just thought the border was their grandfather. Oh, wow. Oh my god. Is this him? I'm unsure. There's, I don't think that's This is Neuralink. Him, but, Neuralink goes around implant So, okay, so that Leonard. might be Leonard Kyle, but it might not be Kyle. So, because I only found one actual image of him. He's kind of hard to find. He doesn't yeah. exist on Google. He is. There's an article. Oh, interesting. Back what was that know. photo of, though? That might have been someone who... So there it is. These no. Mar Mark and Irvin. So Frank Irvin, ultimately, there was... When the lawsuit happened, Irvin mm -hmm. was summoned to court, both of them, and they were eventually exonerated, but there was such a scandal in Massachusetts that Irvin took a job at UCLA, and guess who his boss was? Louis Jolly Louis West. West. Jolly West. <laughs> yeah, no he was one way. of the first people who came aboard when the Violent Center was being uh, planned. Oh my God. So, so later, you know, his mother talked about how she thought the CIA was involved, but there's no, this hasn't been proven. Have you heard of the story about the guy who is the most studied man in brain science? He was a guy who he had an operation. I think he he had some sort of a um, a traumatic brain injury where something happened, and he was uh, I think he was developing epilepsy or something like this. He was having really bad seizures and having like as he was getting older, his epilepsy kept getting really really bad. So he agreed to do some experimental brain surgery where they removed a certain part of his brain, and when he recovered, they realized it completely wiped out his short term memory. So every single day he would wake up and it would be the same day again. Like he would have no memory of the day before, but he had specific long-term memory mm -hmm. and this sort of um, debunked the myth that they thought like memory was stored in the whole brain. Mm. So apparently like this was what they deduced from this was that like different types of memory are stored in different parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. And then there was this other lady who took him in and like got him, did all these other studies on him throughout his life and wrote all of this stuff on him. And uh, it was fascinating. It was in, it was in this book, um, this book called uh, uh, Moonwalking with Einstein, all about oh, yeah. memory. Have you heard of that? I have. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, well, one fascination with this type of psychosurgery is that, not not um, Kyle, but another patient who was called Julia in the records. Mm -hmm. She received the same implants, uh, but she but it was remotely controlled. Mm. Um, and these oh, were wow. uh, a special device that uh, this scientist named Delgado had come oh, up yeah, with. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with him. Yeah, so he he worked he did the the bull thing. Yeah, right? he did the bull thing, and he worked with Mark and Irvin. They co-published articles together about the stimosiever. So Julia, I mean, Leonard Kyle didn't receive the stimosiever. In other words, they couldn't remotely control him. But it did seem that their interest was in violence triggers and remote control, uh, and that with this young woman who was nineteen, uh, 
they did achieve that and they wrote there was actually an article in life magazine about it what do they do to her well they just um so she had she was uh violent uh-huh. a, a, like episodically v- rarely but episodically yeah and so um her family you know allowed this to be done mm-hmm. and she was apparently when she wasn't violent she was a mild-mannered lovely beautiful young woman who played the guitar mm. and she came from a suburb of boston or something like that and after so they show her there are photographs of her in the article in life but she um at, they showed how she would they could stimulate her brain and she would fly into a rage and they sh- and there's a photograph of her throwing herself at the wall oh my god and it's just blurry cuz she's throwing herself with such force and then they have another photograph of and she's wearing the stim receiver and her head's all bandaged uh. and she's playing the guitar it's a really horrifying article <laughs> um which is hard to find online cuz mm. it, it's not available in the Google archives, but at any rate, she apparently never recovered fully. I mean, not at all. She didn't really recover at all, but it, um. 